lawsuit filed by Michael Newdow. Uh, we went before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. We had the Pacific Justice Institute intervened successfully. We argued the case before the Ninth Circuit. I know what some of you are thinking, oh, oh boy, the Ninth Circuit. What good thing can ever come from the Ninth Circuit? Yeah. Well, let me just remind you something. If in the Old Testament, God can speak through a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so we, uh, we argued the case. Uh, along with the U.S. Department of Justice, and the Ninth Circuit, the donkey spoke, ruled three to zero, in favor of our national motto and our currency. Yeah. And in fact, the U.S. Supreme Court, just a couple months ago, denied the petition for cert to allow that to stand as case law story side. We love to go to bat and defend religious freedom particularly as it applies to, uh, to, to speech, and people able to being able to, to pray in public. Pastor Rick Warren, a little chapel called Saddle or something. Saddleback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Saddleback, that's right. And he was uh, given the privilege to give the invocation for the presidential inauguration, a wonderful privilege. And what happened? Uh, a, a lawsuit was filed to stop him. And so we at Pacific Justice went to bat for him. And uh, we were uh, asked to represent him. We flew the next day to Washington, D.C. to argue in court after being requested to do so. Kevin Snyder, our chief counsel, did a great job. The judge cited our cases, cited our, our, our arguments, and upheld the constitutionality of having prayers at public ceremonies like that. It went also before the Supreme Court. Uh, the Supreme Court denied the petition for service a few weeks ago. So that's a wonderful success. we have here in California, a young man who was uh, sharing his faith, talking about his faith with two other people in the middle of a shopping mall in Sacramento area, Roseville. And the owner of the shopping mall was a little company, it was called uh, Westfield. That's right, Westfield, yeah. <laughs> anyway, this guy uh, was arrested by the police and uh, brought, handcuffed, booked, brought down to the, the local jail. Uh, the criminal charges were dropped, but the Pacific Justice filed a lawsuit after we found out that this was the policy of Westfield to prohibit anyone from ever discussing their faith with anyone they meet in the shopping mall at any time, even in the, the, the common area where you have the birds flying. Well, the birds can fly freely, but not humans, I guess. Anyway, in you know, the eating area. So we filed a lawsuit. The appellate court, uh, the lower court we lost, we appealed because we don't give up at the Pacific Justice Institute. We appeal. Hell Court reversed three to zero, ruling that in California you cannot censor people's ability to share their faith so long as they're not creating disturbance and, and, and interfering with commerce. And then went to the state Supreme Court. Fortunately for us in the interim, the, the judge that wrote the opinion was appointed to be Chief Justice of the state Supreme Court. So needless to say, we have a little advantage. She wrote her, she handed out her decision to her peers. And that was a real nice, uh, easy way to, to win. So uh, they, they allowed that decision to stand. And that now we now have great religious freedom, like un unbelievable religious freedom in public places in the state of California and, and uh, like, like never before. So that's a wonderful, wonderful success. And this is California. California. Uh, we also go to that for, for church. We've seen some tremendous headway. We had a little church in Watai. We went to back then. After 20 years, they were shut down by the county of San Diego Board of Supervisors. Why? Simply because uh, 23 years ago it had been zoned, been zoned to be a country western bar. And technically they were not zoned correctly, even though it had always been a church, this building. And so they shut it down, they padlocked the place, they went underground. We represented it in the federal court, the federal judge says, you know, I don't like to tell counties what to do. But this is so draconian, I have no choice. I hereby grant an injunction against the I hereby grant an injunction. I guess the County Board of Supervisors of San Diego opened that church now, and they did. Yeah. But we're still defending that church because the county is countersuing for over $300,000 of lost permitting fees. So, I bet, oh, I feel so sorry for them, yeah. Because they're about serving us, the people. So, uh, then there was another huge victory before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Leandro. They, in fact, the city decided to forbid a four square church from building there. We went to bat for them. What happened? Um, we went to bat for them. The, the, the judge from San Francisco ruled in favor of the city, saying, yeah, if the city wants to keep out of church, that's okay. 
wants to keep the church from living in a building they bought, that's okay. Because they didn't want to lose property tax revenue, that's a valid reason. In fact, they came up with 24 reasons for keeping out the church. This attorney really did his job, just coming with every reason he could. All he needed was one to stick. But then we appealed it to the Ninth Circuit. And the donkey spoke again. <laughs> and they, in an incredible decision, ruled that all 24 reasons were invalid to keep out this church. Thank you. All 24. And we now have the greatest precedent in, of any circuit in the country when it comes to the rights of churches to build, grow, and expand. I am excited, folks. recently, matter dealing with the cross-dressing in the public schools. Maybe you saw this on Fox News, they did a great job. They interviewed this guy, he was just fantastic. Okay, it was me. But anyway, <laughs> I'm a little biased, okay. But it, it went really well. And they covered this case because they have a program to bring cross-dressing into the elementary school, kindergarten level, to teach boys that you can be a boy on the outside to be a girl on the inside, or a girl on the outside, boy on the inside. It's okay for boys to wear nail polish. Kindergartners. And so we're, we're going to back to represent those parents and enable them to opt out their children. And we're going to do that again and again and again to make sure that parents' rights are respected here in the state of California. Yes. We, we love to liberate union workers from the union. Uh, we're working really hard to do that as well right now. We have a major campaign we want to get started. Because we defend the rights of all union workers to have all their union dues, never go to their union again, all their dues, not just political part, I mean all of it, to be diverted to a charity in agreement with their faith instead of the union. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? And uh, so that's a, an exciting point too. We're making a lot of progress. And then finally, I'll just mention we're challenging the health care bill. You guys heard of that, the health care reform law? Obamacare, you heard about the game. Well, we filed it. We thought we filed it in the best city to file it, right here in San Diego. In our San Diego office, uh, head of our Peter Episcopal and uh, uh, Bill Morrow, or Senator Bill Morrow, they head up that office. They filed that lawsuit. It's now on appeal to the Ninth Circuit. Oral argument is next month, July 13th and 14th, or 14th, I believe. And so please uh, pray for us. But uh, that's a little important. Because if we don't contain government on this, and we don't allow the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, to be respected, then the door will be wide open for them to basically mandate whatever they wish on our lives with regard to what we buy, what we sell, etc. It is a huge landmark question as to whether or not the federal powers can be limited by the Constitution in a valid way. This is a very, really major case. And uh, I've met with the Attorney General of Virginia twice on this, back east. Uh, he's on the agreement as I, uh, that, uh, that this is likely to be heard by the Supreme Court by about this time next year. It's going to be it's gonna fast, you know, a fast circuit. And um, there's a real good chance that we're going to see a, a victory. But the, the odds are in our favor that, this, that the Supreme Court, we believe, will overturn the Obamacare. And so that's going to be a huge win. First, uh, with regards to uh, the unions, keeping them in check. Uh, hopefully all of you will fill out this out this blue sheet if you're not receiving our press releases and case updates. Please fill this out before, I, before I'm done uh, today, if you can. And one of the reasons is because we're going to be sending you information about our union news campaign. And we want you and need you to pass that information on to other union people uh, and so that they can learn about their rights. Only one out of a thousand know of their rights to be able to stand with their union, have all their dues, and never go to their union again, and all of them going to a charity and agree with their faith. And that is fantastic. So please do that so we can keep you updated on that point. Another point is dealing with, with uh, your uh, churches and synagogues, getting their people to register to vote. We at Pacific Justice uh, have uh, prepared a booklet it's, uh, it's a real thick book. No, it's real thin. It's called The Church and Politics, What Pastors and Churches Can Do to Affect Public Policy with Christian Principles. Real clear cut, easy to read, easy to apply. And if you want one of these, uh, please uh, feel free just to let our office know. We'll be happy to send you a copy. Uh, and, send, and you can send, give it to your clergy. Um, one thing I, we, we do a uh, seminars for pastors on this issue is we tell them, say, you know, even if you do just the very bare minimum, 